Hey, everybody, and welcome to another How to Succeed podcast. This week, we are talking with a talk show host, author, podcaster, speaker, and coach. His name is Greg Knapp. He's right there. I'm your host, Mike Montague from Playful Humans, where we help the burned out and bored find more fun, flow, and fulfillment in life. You can join the club and the rest of the Playful Humans at playfulhumans.com. We also have an online personality quiz. You can find that at playfulhumans.com slash quiz. And you can find Greg at gregorybnap.com. Let's see how playful you are and uh, ready to talk to Greg about how he is a speaker and talk show host. Greg, welcome to the, the show. This I'm is just, uh, fun. The vibing. theme song is perfectly matched uh, for this one. It is by Pink Zebra. Look for Chasing the Sunshine. And the whole song is great. Uh, I enjoy it just for fun as well. But, uh, oh, we got to start with the joke of the week. The joke of the week is brought to you by Amazon. Amazon, we already know what you want. Just give us your money and then check your front door. Amazon.com. Uh, do you know how to get in touch with a Greek architect? Greek architect. Have, you call uh, him. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like it. I was really yeah. struggling for a, an angle there, but yeah, that's good. Yeah. Uh, great bad dad jokes are always fun, and uh, you can use those with your friends. Uh, so that one's for free. Uh, and Greg, you, I've been on your show before, which is fun. On, on the radio show, we both have uh, podcasts, and we've done stuff there. So we've been friends for a while here and I know a little bit about your story, but I thought it would be fun for other people to hear just how you've kind of transitioned from like real jobs and thinking you had to be serious to following your passion and purpose. Cause I know that's your uh, favorite topic. You wrote a book on that too. So without trying to give away all of your great stories, tell me about kind of how you got started and how you play for a living. Oh man. I love to talk about that. Could, could I tell you a joke of the week first? Yeah. Would that be okay? Yeah. My, my dad told me this joke because you said bad dad jokes, right? And it was Christmas time. I was down to see my dad. So uh, he had all these jokes and he said, what do you call a bunch of um, chess nerds sitting in the lobby of a hotel in front of the fireplace? Oh, I, I forgot to say the I forgot to say the chess nerds are talking about their championship. So the oh. answer is chess nuts boasting on an open foyer. <laughs> nice. All right. Really, really a long way to go for that one. Sorry. But, uh, <laughs> shout out to dads. Like, uh, shout outs to dads. I, I have heard other ones similar to that recently that are riddles uh, like that or rhymes, uh, rhyme words and uh, I think it was in a movie or, or something I was watching, but I love those. It makes you think and it makes you laugh. So that's great. Yeah. They're fun. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so my story is, is a little bit weird um, to be honest about how I got into what I did for 21 years, which was a talk show host, a uh, radio talk show host, focusing on current events, politics, things like that. And I have always been trying to figure out why am I here? I think, you know, it's a universal question. What's my purpose? What gets me excited? I, I actually had, uh, I've been interviewed in high school in the high school newspaper. And they said, well, what, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I just want to do something that isn't boring. I don't want to live a normal mm -hmm. average life. You know, I don't want to sit in a cubicle all day. Some people love that. I don't love that. So I was always looking for it. And I started out, um, just getting whatever job I could. Actually, I was a probation and parole officer straight out of college because I had a four year psych degree. And then this is how forward thinking I was then. I didn't realize you had to at least have a master's to actually be a counselor. So <laughs> I thought I was going to be a mental health counselor. So I get out and I'm like, oh man, I wish the college had told me that. And they probably did. And I probably wasn't there that day. Yeah. So I, I'm a probation and parole officer. So I did that for a year. I went back, got the master's, started mental health counseling really enjoyed that for several years and then started to get burned out 
And I was driving all around a very rural area doing in-home behavior counseling for kids that were at risk of being removed from the home. Did you ever see Super Nanny or Nanny 911? You ever yeah. watch that show? Yeah. You know, the yeah. woman would go in and help the kids and the family work it out. That's what I was doing, except I was doing it to people who were ordered by the state to do it. So I was going into homes that you'd kind of pull up and go, no, nobody's really living in that house, right? I mean, that's, that's condemned, yeah, right? Nope, yeah. there are people in there. So uh, the good part was I felt like I was really helping people who needed it, but I did start to get burned out and I driving around so much like hours in the car every day. I was listening a lot of talk radio to stay awake, really. And that's the reason I started doing this before you could listen to podcasts. There was no uh, cell right, phone, yeah. internet, anything like that. This is like back in the uh, early nineties. And uh, I said, man, I, uh, this is really fun. I think I could do that. I've always debated a lot. I've always kept up with current events. Uh, I'm very, I'm very good at kind of looking at both sides and trying to give you what I think. And I think in a fun way and not in a, in a mean spirited way, you know, in an entertaining way. And so I just called up the number one talk station in my town. And I said, Hey man, I really want to get into talk radio. Is there anything I can do? I, and, and I'll never forget what the guy said. Can you be here at five o'clock? <laughs> I was awesome. like, yeah, I can be here at five o'clock. Now I was not on the air that day, but that day I started in radio that night after my normal job, I started producing overnight shows and thank God I got in before there were computers because now you don't need people like me. But I mm -hmm. remember the eight track tape when you were a kid, you know, that's how we ran commercials. There were like eight slots of them. And so when we would pull away from the national show, I would just have to fire off manually the commercials one minute at a time until they were done and then pop back up the national feed and we're back into the show. And that's how I got into talk radio by starting like that. Well, that's huge. And I, I did radio as well. I did the top 40 station stuff, but people would ask me too, like, oh, that's a cool job. How do you get to be on the radio? And I tell them, well, you just get started. Nobody's like going around handing out uh, radio shows or, or even auditioning and, and stuff for things mostly. Uh, so I started doing karaoke shows in a bar and then the radio show hosts, uh, morning shows happened to come to the bar and the radio ha station happened to do a karaoke contest that I, they needed uh, a host or somebody with the instrumental songs to play the songs for that. And then they needed a prize guy on the weekends and then they needed uh, an overnight guy from midnight to 5.30, like you said, or, or somebody to produce other things. And you just start by doing the crappy shows nobody else wants and then you work your way to bigger stuff. And I, think I guess that's, that, a, that's my I, next I, question for you though, is you yeah. got all the way to a, your own nationally syndicated radio show uh, across the, the country and you filled in for huge people. You can share some of those names if you want, but, um, that's I'm imagining it's the same thing for you, right? It's absolutely the same thing. I think it's the same thing throughout life. And I think it's why so few people really do it because you yeah. have to be willing to do the low end before you hit the high end. And that's why it needs mm -hmm. to be something you love to do. Like I had fun yeah. hitting off those commercials and I had fun listening to the shows that were on because it was the station I wanted to be on. And so I was taking notes on how their hosts were doing it. These national hosts. Oh, that's how you tease ahead to the next segment. Oh, that's how you bring in a caller and, and make them sound good. Or, oh, that's how you disagree with the caller. Or that's not how I'm going to do it. You know, you can find right. either way and start taking notes. And, and then I started, like, after my shift, I, I would go into one of the uh, production bins. You know, if you're not familiar with radio, there's these little tiny studios that they make commercials in and things like that. So I would go Basically into one closets, of those. Yeah. yeah, this little closet. And I pretend I had my own show. So I'd prepare uh, the different stories I was going to talk about. And I would do my own show every night. And then I would listen to it on the way home every day. And then I'd go, oh, that was horrible. Or, oh, I should have done this. Mm. Or, oh, I'm saying uh, too much. Or whatever it was and start working on it. And then I started getting some friends in radio. And I would let them listen to the tape. And they would give me feedback. And I would get better and better and better. And you just had to keep working on it. I, and then there's this thing of you can't let a gatekeeper stop you. Because my boss at the time... I took my tape to him, my best tape, and I said, hey, I really want to get on. I would love to do a weekend show for you, uh, a, a late at night show for you just to get started. Here's my tape. I don't think he ever listened to it because he just mm -hmm. said, he goes, you're, you're, you're a producer. 
I said, I know I'm a producer right now, but I want to be on air. And, and all he would say is you're a producer. So I had to leave that station. Yeah. I actually, I actually paid to be on the worst station in town. It was running. You want to know how bad the station was? It was running. <laughs> it was running CNN headline news, just the audio. Now, this is the TV show, CNN headline news. Yeah. So when they're showing images and talking about images, all you're hearing is the audio. Nobody was listening to this station. I mean, nobody it didn't even show up in the ratings. Right. So I, yeah. I bought an hour a day. Um, and then my show started showing up in the ratings. I had to try and sell advertisements for one wow. hour of radio a day on a station nobody yeah. listened to. That did not go great. No. I sold a few, but uh, that did not go great. So I was still working. I, what I, I was still working the mental health field, using that money to buy the time. But thankfully, after six months of this, um, they said, hey, you know, you're showing up in the ratings. Your show's good. We're not going to make you pay anymore. And then they gave me two hours because they had, they had awesome. nothing, but it was awesome. And then yeah. from there, um, right when I was about to quit, because at that point, when I'm doing two hours a day and really trying to do a good show, I was doing overnights in a mental health facility where we um, evaluated the people the police brought in. So oh, it was wow. really starting to wear on me. I felt like I wasn't making enough money for my, my wife and I. Thankfully, we didn't have kids yet, but she was really cool. She's like, no, 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 go for it. Right when I was about to quit and get a real job, the old boss called me and goes, Hey man, um, you're pretty good. We'll put you on our station. So he put me on nights. Then a consultant came in that said he should be on prime time. So I went to afternoons and then I did a show for a little bit in mornings in Gainesville. And from there I went to Dallas and in Dallas, I got to do afternoon drive from Dallas. I got the syndicated show and like you were saying, Mike, the, the way that you got into radio where you just kept doing things, that's the same thing for me. I was like, I started calling to be syndicated when I was in Gainesville. Gainesville, I think at the time was market 212 or something like that. Yeah. And some of these syndicators I would contact, they said, oh, okay, where are you on? I go, I'm in Gainesville, Florida. And they went, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Literally, they just laugh at me on the phone because, you know, to get syndicated, you're usually on one of these big markets and you have a huge following and then people want you to be syndicated. But I didn't let that stop me. I just kept calling all these people. And um, I think that's partially how I got to Dallas is people started hearing about me. And then from Dallas, it's much easier to get syndicated. It's market five. Yeah, right. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. For people that don't know the market sizes. Yeah. Like New York and LA one and two, you know, Chicago, Dallas, top five, Kansas City's like 30, Cincinnati would be in that range. So Gainesville at like 200 and something is, you know, yeah, yeah that's like that's a, you know, for the for the national football rankings that would be like a division three you know college that nobody's ever heard of making right. the top 20 <laughs> and it was weird. I, start, I started in jacksonville which is like market 43 jacksonville yeah. florida but i went to gainesville because i wanted to do a morning show because morning show at the time was more prestigious than the afternoon drive yeah um but then really if you look at the ratings it kind of flipped in radio where afternoon drive had more people listening than morning drive so i thought that was interesting um, and then to get to fill in for syndicated host before I got syndicated, that really helped me get syndicated. And the way I did that, cause I, I had some people in the business go, man, you are so lucky. How are you filling in for those guys? Cause I, I, I filled in for, um, Glenn Beck, um, Tony Snow before he passed and some of the old guys like G Gordon, Liddy and Mike Reagan and Michael Savage and, and, uh, uh just, a, a and John Gibson from Fox news and a bunch of other. And the way I got that was I asked. I would yeah. just so crazy, you know, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? You know, I would, I would find out the contacts, their producers. And I would say, Hey, I know sometimes your host is out sick or your host is taking a vacation. Uh, I'm in Dallas. Here's a sample of my work. I had to actually send a CD back then, you know, there was <laughs> no right. MP3 yeah. and, and I would love to fill in and they started asking me. And then once you fill in for one person and you start to do well, you can use that to get another one, another one, another one. And, then the syndicator could see that I could handle a national show. Yeah. And that I mean, brings up a huge point. Cause I was the, the same way with my DJ stuff and, and with the music was being available and willing is, are the first two requirements, right? Willing, willing and able are huge. And there's always stuff that the higher paid people don't want to do, whether it was, uh, I started in commercials. I did, uh, you know, the adult shop uh, commercials, 
for the radio because the other, the other guys don't want to read that. They don't want that to be their brand. But nobody knows who I am. I don't right. have to put my name on it. I'll <laughs> I'll read the Cirillus commercials or whatever. I don't uh, I don't care. And so getting paid to do that or other ones. There's like a weight loss uh, program. It was a hundred bucks a week. My favorite one was the Powerball. My job uh, for a hundred bucks a week was to come in on uh, Wednesday and Friday and update the number. So it's like, all I would do is hit record and say, the current Powerball jackpot is $37 million. That's a hundred bucks for that. And I was like, nobody else wants to do this? Man, I'd do They're that like, right no, now. we don't want to drive all the way in. And you had to be at a specific time because, you know, you got to time the drawings and, and stuff. But So they just didn't want to do it for the hassle. But I'm like, hey, that's, that's you know, what, how, how many... Uh, <laughs> How many dollars an hour am I getting paid for that uh, if you work out those 20 seconds? So uh, things like that, I think, are so much fun. And you mentioned, you know, pu pushing the buttons was fun. Things on like, you know, Christmas Eve or something, I would work at the radio stations and we had four radio stations in the same building. Nobody wanted to work except for me. So I met my family earlier, then driving to the station. I got to be on four stations at the same time. And I got to like, just giggling to myself, wondering if people like flipped stations and heard like the same guy doing the weather and news on all of these different stations at the same Absolutely. time, like what was going on. That stuff to me is really fun. That's the Yeah, I, I, I think it was New Year's Day I worked one time because like you said, nobody else wanted to. And I, I, I literally, it was before we had kids again, I brought my wife in because I was running football games. So we just turned the football game on and I just had to pull away and run the commercials. We brought yeah. in food. We, we were just yeah. hanging out together and watching football and getting paid. It was awesome. Yeah, I figured like, what else do I have better to do? And I, like you said, I need the experience. I need the tape and then I do it. And same way I got to open for Billy Idol and Frankie Valley and, and stuff is they just go, we need anybody credible to do this. Who can play music and not make us look dumb? Uh, and so i will be like, Hey, I can do that. And, and nobody else wanted to, sometimes people are nervous, I think, or they just don't have the skill set. So if you're able and willing, that's a huge well, part of getting awesome, fun opportunities to play for a living. I'll tell you the other part of it is what you need, because when I was first filling in for people, I would fill in for other hosts around the country too, that weren't syndicated, right? Cause mm. they, okay, well, they don't pay nearly as much as the syndicated people. I wouldn't do that once I had a better job. Once I got to Dallas, mm -hmm. it's not worth my time anymore to fill in for you for a hundred bucks for a three hour show that takes me three hours to prep. But when I wasn't right. full time somewhere, I was like, heck yeah, I'll do that. Get the money, get the experience. So as, as that person like me, as I got to this level and didn't want to do that anymore, well, now you got a chance to do this stuff down here, but you got to do it. Yeah. You got to put out the effort to find those and be willing to do it. I think that's huge. And it was for me. I always said that when I was younger too, especially with the bars and nightclubs and stuff is I knew I didn't want to be 40 with a family and, and kids like up until three o'clock in the morning, DJing downtown. Right. I wanted to do that while, when I could, and when I could afford to live on skinny uh, income. Uh, but I also heard you say there that you've, I know you've moved at least like three or four times with your career. And I feel like that's tough. And a lot of times that's what people who want to play for a living get stuck is they don't want to make those sacrifices. So I heard you say earlier, like everybody wants the big popular show. They don't want to have the crappy podcast. Nobody listens to, but you don't go from one to the other to get the good podcast. You have to have the crappy one that 10 people listen to. And then you get to a hundred, then you get to a thousand, then you get to 10,000. There's no way to go straight to 10,000. Uh, no. And I think right? it's really important. Absolutely. And I, and you're right. It, it gets harder as you get older and we can use that as an excuse and say, man, I can't do that anymore. And, and it's true. Sometimes you can't like, if you have a family, well, I'll start a over and make this and then your family starves so there are some realities that creep in for sure and that's why it's good to do the side gig and try and grow it slowly yeah. there while you're still doing your full-time thing that's harder there's no doubt about it that's harder but it still can be done and it can still be fun that way and i love what yeah. you said about everybody wants to the to be number one tomorrow that's just not reality. And actually that's not really even fun. It's kind of fun to build it and to see yeah. where you were and where you are now. I, I, I have 
tapes from my first year on radio that I'll listen to every once in a while. And I'm like, Oh man, I'm so much better. You know, <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing. Even if you got the show, you would screw it up. Right. right? So it's better exactly. to, to learn while nobody's listening. Oh man. If they'd put me on Dallas day one, I would have bombed. Uh, I would, yeah. cause I, I, I didn't know how to do it. I, I mean, it, people think you just walk in and click on the microphone and do a three hour talk show. I spend more right. time getting ready for the show than I do doing the show so that I actually know what I'm talking about. So that when a caller calls in, I can speak intelligently with them. I can point out where they're wrong or an idea they have that, that I like. I, I can explain both sides of the story and give you my opinion on it. I can make jokes about it. I can tell you things that happened five years ago because I've been doing it for 21 years and tell you how history repeats itself. All that stuff I couldn't have done if they put me on Dallas day one, I would have totally bombed. And, and the other part of the bad and the good, Mike, how many times have you seen people, and I, all the time I see this, where they go, man, I'm just not as good as, and they name the best guy in the business. I go, of right. course you're not. This is your first yeah. time ever doing it. You think that's how he sounded the first time he did? That's like saying, man, our song's not as good as the Beatles. Right. Do you know how long they played in, uh, where, where was it they played? Mike, you were a Beatles fan. I know they started in Liverpool, yeah. but they were in Europe for like seven years. They went to Germany, yeah. Yeah. For like for seven years, they played these bars in Germany to get their sound tight and to get exactly what they wanted. And it, it, it's not like they rolled out of bed in Liverpool and, and wrote the White Album. You know, it, <laughs> right? It, people just think it's going to happen. Their first song sucked. You just don't hear them. And right. That, and it, yeah, I think it's funny. I heard somebody else, uh, a comedian say, it's like thinking you can just pick up a basketball and play LeBron James uh, or that you shouldn't play basketball because you're not LeBron James. Well, well, yeah, it took him a long time to be LeBron James, right? And a lot of practice. He, the first time he picked up a basketball, he wasn't very good either. But you're right. I think it's so great. One of the cool things about starting anything, uh, especially as a side hustle, is um, you get you're bad when nobody is paying attention. That's the beauty part of it. So you can practice, you can fail, you can mess it up, you know, you can miss uh, deadlines and stuff and nobody cares. You don't get fired because you don't have a job yet. You know, there's no pressure. You can experiment and have fun. And that's where a lot of creativity and cool lessons come from. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about your, your book too, because I feel like it's right in line here. Your book, Go, um, helps people find their passion and purpose has that's right there and has uh, some great exercises in there to actually help you do it. I feel like a lot of people talk about why having passion and purpose is important. And everybody goes, yeah, I'd like to love my job, but I also have to pay the bills and, or I just don't know what that is, uh, which I think is a bigger one for me. I've always kind of felt like I had options, but it's hard for me to commit to something and be like, that's why I don't have a tattoo. I've never felt that passionate about something that is like, oh, this is definitely me for the rest of my life, right? Uh, Absolutely. So how do you help I, people with that? I, I couldn't agree more with what you said about a lot of books get y'all excited about finding your purpose and then they don't tell you how. That's, that's why I wrote this really. Cause I, you know, my background is in counseling psychology as we talked about. And I've always been about self-improvement and self-actualization and really trying to understand what's going on in my head and so I've read this stuff forever, literally for 30 years, I've been reading these books, probably one a month, truly, and using a lot of the stuff that, that was in these books. And I said, but none of these really got me to this pursuit of what I really wanted. Now, I figured it out on my own, and that's how I got into radio. So I said, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really tell people how to do this. And, and here's a key. There's not just one way. I have multiple right. ideas in the book, multiple ideas on my website. It's gregorybnapp.com um, where you can just go through there and see, okay, there's a lot of different ways I can try and figure this out. But my biggest one is I call it R and R, you know, it's, it's where you actually do a retreat where you remember and rediscover stuff that's inside you. Um, mm -hmm. I, I happen to be a Christian. So I believe if I, if I really turn inward and pray that the Holy spirit is going to reveal things to me, um, other people call it the universe, other people, whatever it is that you want to call it, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I don't think the answer's out there somewhere. There's too much yeah. out there. It's in here. What, what resonates with you, what feels right to you when you do it, what excites you, what makes you feel like um, you're just, people tell you, hey, you're really good at that. And you're like, this oh, is easy. 
It's because it's easy for you because it's your talent. It's what you're excited about. It's what you've worked on. We tend to discount that because we just think that's easy. It's not easy for everybody. It's easy for you. Or when you're doing something and time flies by, there's a reason for that. You're getting in the zone, you know, you're getting the flow, um, whatever you want to call that, but everybody's experienced yeah. that. So I just kind of walk you through how you go back in your mind and go back over your life and go back over things you've done where you can remember times when everything felt right. And usually there's something in there that you can use for either a hobby or a career. And there is a difference between a hobby and a career, right? And, but the other part is people, a lot of times I think, and you just referenced it, Mike, of this is my purpose forever for the rest of my life and that's it. And I don't believe that either. I think there's multiple things that will give you the juices and the flow that you want. Over time, they'll change, you know, and yeah. that's okay. There's, there's nothing wrong with that either. And I think we got to embrace trying things you know and that's why the side hustle is good too you don't quit your job jump into something and then three months later go oh crap this isn't what i thought it was you can start it well you can even get burned out playing for a living right i mean both of us are no longer in radio because there are a lot of things about any job that is still a job. That's the why they pay people for it. But whenever you get into big international companies owning, you know, the stations or other people picking the music, telling you what you can and can't say, you go, well, this isn't fun for me anymore. So I love doing radio, but I don't love working in radio. And so those things kind of change as you go and get to different levels and you find different levels. I think of even like self-actualization, right? Well, I wanted to do this just because I wanted to say that I did, but now that I got here, I want to grow and I want to go to a different level or I want to do something else and talk about something else. Maybe that's not what got me this job, right? So yeah. And, and I also think change. we have to remember that even when we have the perfect job, there's going to be things we don't like about it because I think some, right. we, we build it up in our head that, oh, if I get, if I find what I love, I'll never work another day in my life. You've heard that, right? It's kind of yeah. true. It's kind of true. It's I, not yeah. all the way true, right? I mean, I guarantee you there are times, you mentioned LeBron James. I guarantee you there are yeah. times he's like, I don't want to work out. I, I don't want to do that. Uh, For uh, sure. Mick, Mick Jagger, I'm sure there are times he's like, I don't want to play. I can't get no satisfaction again. Another time, <laughs> right. really, right? I mean, there's always something or the travel or whatever it is. And you have to go, is is the rest of this worth it for this part? Because there is no job where all day long, you're like, every part of this is awesome. You know, you're yeah. little Lego guy. No, no, not everything is not <laughs> awesome. There's something wrong. Well, that that's true. And I'm not sure I do believe that about the, the passion that you won't ever work a day again, because I, I think you are going to have days that you work, but again, both you and I have experienced it. I loved DJing and hosting karaoke shows and, and seeing hundreds or, or even thousands of people sometimes dancing and having fun. I mean, and you're causing that for other people and it's right in your face, people laughing and, and, and just smiling and having fun. That's an amazing feeling. But if you're doing that seven days a week, it gets really tiring. Or you go, man, tonight, I just want to freaking read a book and I don't want to see anybody. <laughs> like there's just different times. So I think, and balance is weird too, because people always talk about balance in life. And I think having everything balanced and flat is really boring, but having things variable so that you can recharge and rest is important. So I think a lot of people kind of miss that part of it too, that sometimes a little work is good for you. Sometimes a little play is good for you, but you can't do all, or in rest is good for you, but you can't do all three at, uh, you know, 24 seven. Right. I kind of see it as a friend told me it's more, he goes, I'm not big on balance. I'm big on rhythms because ah, there, there you go. There may be a rhythm where I'm working really hard for this stretch because I know this is the big project we've got to get done. And I I'm in the work rhythm right here, but Hey, we celebrated it's done. And now we're in this little rest rhythm, you know, and now we're going to the next thing. So you're right. Everything can't always be in balance. You, that's not how the world works. And that's not, like you said, even where you get the most fun. Uh, I love that. So now it's time to have some fun. We always wrap it up with a game. It's a play podcast, so we got to play, but uh, you actually don't have to play. Play has to be voluntary. So I'll ask you, Greg, would you like to get weird or would you like to walk away? Let's get weird. 
All right, spinning the wheel. We got 10 games on the wheel. One that has landed for you is two truths and a lie. Two truths and a lie. This is uh, where we share two fun facts about ourselves and one that is completely made up. And then you try and decide which one is the lie. I'll go first. Um, I have been maced by the police. Um, I have once DJed for 24 hours straight and I was, uh, I won a male beauty pageant in college. I was Mr. Park University. Which one do you think is the lie? Pretty sure you were maced by police, but I think that was probably a radio stunt. So I'm going to say yes on that one. That's a true Correct. DJ for 24 hours. I'm kind of torn here because I think you threw in the beauty thing because you think I would obviously think that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> no offense there, Mike. Um, yeah. I'm going to go. That's the lie. The beauty pageant is the lie. Oh, it's correct. I got second in the Mr. Park University yes. pageant. Yes. Uh, it still burns me a little bit. I feel like I got <laughs> the Russian judge got me in the swimsuit competition. There were but, only two uh, people in there though, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. There wasn't a lot, a small college, but, uh, but it was great. And then uh, one St. Patrick's Day was awesome. I started at three o'clock in the morning prepping for the morning show uh, live at a Sonic and finished at three o'clock in the morning at a bar uh, that, that closed uh, DJing in a club. And I made a whole bunch of money and had a whole lot of fun, but was definitely exhausted after that one. It was a great story. Man, All right, awesome. uh, how about your that's three? Hmm. All right, I'm, I'm gonna go for weird ones, I think. Um, I almost lost my arm when I was four years old, climbing a fence to keep sand out of my sandals. <laughs> I almost died when I was seven, hanging off a branch over a cliff. I can wiggle my ears. Ooh, those are tough because they all sound believable to me. When you threw in the sand, and I, I know you're from Florida, I feel like that one's gotta be true. Um, the cliff, also feels true so i'm gonna say wiggle your ears is the lie hmm. i'm looking for the wiggle wait let me get close <laughs> i can't see on zoom <laughs> oh there you go all right so what the was problem the is i just the problem is i just realized all three of mine were true <laughs> All three of mine are true. <laughs> you forgot the lie. That's all right. That's even a better way to end. I love it. You forgot to lie. Oh, that's and great. Uh, I forgot. Oh, and it was funny though. Watching was somebody same. wiggle their ears is always good on an audio podcast, too. So I love that about these games. <laughs> we're on video. I didn't realize you were putting this part on. It is. So oh, if you want to see Greg do that, go check out the YouTube version, but also audio only on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. Uh, any final thoughts for us, Greg? I just say, uh, I love the start of my book is Mark Twain saying the two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you figure out why. So if you haven't figured out why you're here, man, you're missing it. Uh, I really, and, and it doesn't have to be one thing. It can be multiple things. Uh, like I said, I'm a Christian. So for Christians, the purpose is to glorify God, but what are you doing while you do it? Um, yeah. You know, what are you doing that makes you excited where you feel like this is why I'm here. And when you're doing that, it sure makes the rest of your life so much better. I love it. Great way to finish up. Again, that's talk show host, author, podcaster, speaker, and coach, Greg Knapp. Find him at gregorybnapp.com. You can find more about Playful Humans at playfulhumans.com. Take that personality quiz, playfulhumans.com slash quiz. And uh, you know what? Go out there, have some fun. If you can't be good, be good at it. That's what I always say. Go out and play. Have a good time. Later.